The topic that's on my heart, what I've been thinking about this week, is the topic of evil. And as I've studied it now, I'm, I'm really, I feel like more nervous than I ever have been to stand up here because as I began to think about it and study it this week, I'm overwhelmed with the volume of stuff that we can talk about. Um, it's but, so I'm going to try to uh, to condense it here a little bit. Um, but I want to just focus on that topic because there's something that we do as a church every week um, that's been causing me to think um, about this topic of evil. Now, we know that evil is everywhere. In our world today, evil is everywhere. And we also know that evil is very easily accessed. We have two ways that we access the, this, this evil that's in the world today. One is we can look at our culture and the way that Satan has positioned things in our culture today or in our world today that we can access evil very easily. The other way is through our flesh. We don't have to go far to begin to find evil in this life because in our flesh, Satan is at work and is tempting and laying out the temptations for us to be able to step into any snare that we're not, we don't have our eyes open to or we're um, not diligent in seeking out the Lord and we will step into that snare. But there's something that's been on my mind that I've been thinking about um, this week, and we, we say this every week as a church, every time that we gather as a body to do Bible study. And so I want to pick, there's one phrase out of the Lord's Prayer that I want us to look at. So I want to read the Lord's Prayer to you, um, starting in Matthew chapter 6. And I know we all know this prayer at this point, but I want to examine something that we pray, that we ask, we make petition on with God about. Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 9. Jesus is talking here, and He says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do we need to be delivered from evil? I was thinking about that tonight. And Doris asked me this morning, because um, I had just told her that I was going to be speaking tonight. And she was asking me, what are we going to be talking about? And I was like, well, we're going to talk about deliverance. <clears throat> we're going to have a deliverance service at the Primitive Baptist Church. And it's kind of interesting to think about, but you know, we pray that every time that we gather together. Lord, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. What are are we asking God in that particular passage? What are we looking at? Now, I want to do something, I want to take you in a direction that my mind went at the very beginning, and then I want to go and look at what Scripture, where Scripture took me. But we, we can look at evil in terms of how I typically think of evil. I think I have a tendency, or I have had a tendency, to make evil something that's mystical, and it's all about Satan. You know, we look at our generation today, and we can see in our generation how how evil is, it is mystified, and it's glorified, and it's raised up as something that's good. Guys, what? Satan uh, is using what is evil out there. Our generation today is calling it good. And then what? We ought to be calling good good as a body of believers, as a church. We're settling with what we should be calling it evil. Our generation today, we can look at a few things. Um, Our generation our, celebrates, and I'm going to use this, celebrates a woman's choice. And they, high, they hail that as being um, a freedom. They hail that as being a liberty. What does Scripture call that when it comes to the issue of abortion? God calls that murder. And what what we're hailing is something that's very high in our generation today, our culture today, as women's choice and this liberation, God holds in a completely different light. We can look at unity, where Mm -hmm. we typically as a generation today hail unity as a great privilege. And the way that we are unifying in this culture, whereas a man, it's okay for a man to lie with a man, God has a completely different standard on that type of... He calls for disunity. disunity. He's designed, designed that for division, as a matter of fact. Our generation is confusing the evil and the good.
our generation, I could go in lots of different directions. Our generation profits off of evil nowadays. Let's, let's start with Disney if you want to. Um, and one of the shows that I, I've never watched but I um, have seen a little bit about and talked to others about is that Wizards of Waverly Place. What does the Bible say about witchcraft? Yeah. And yet we, we profit off of it. We make it entertainment. We hail it as something that is fun and it's light and it's not a serious thing. Scripture treats these things as evil. And our generation today has taken those things and we have, we have made them into something that is for profit, for entertainment, for our joy, for our pleasure. And we call it good is what we end up doing. <clears throat> we, we take tolerance in our generation today. We all ought to be tolerant of some of the beliefs of other people around us. And God was not a tolerant God when it came to issues of evil and sin in Scripture. He was not. And yet we celebrate it as that. Everywhere around us, we have access to evil, and it's easy to access it. And here we have in this particular prayer that we gather together as a church, and we pray every week, deliver us from evil. I want us to begin to examine what we're asking God to deliver us from. Now, remember the word deliver, same as the word saved. It's not a deliverance like you're going to have a seance. I think I need to, I want to just clarify that. Um, because I think in our generation today, we've made that word something that it ought not to be as well. But deliverance just means saved from, taken away from. And as we go through and we look at evil, I think you'll see the way we are delivered and how we ought to deliver ourselves at times as well from the evil that we're staring at. So, yeah, I think, you know, we do. We do need to be delivered. This prayer is not just a prayer of being delivered from Satan. It's a prayer of being delivered from evil. So let's look at it. What exactly are we praying for? What is evil? Now we need to evaluate that first. What are we asking God to deliver us from when we say evil? <clears throat> and I was, now I was searching in, in Scripture in, in Isaiah 45, 7. I know Brother Billy preached on this a good while back. Isaiah 45, 7 reads this. It says, I form the light. This is God talking to us. I form the light, God says and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So if we go back to the very root of, of looking at evil, we've got to go and examine this particular passage of Scripture. And according to this verse, we know that God makes peace. And I think every one of us in here can testify to the fact that you've experienced that peace of God in your life. You know what it's like to have God come and manifest His presence with you and feel His peace. It's not just a peace like, okay, things are calm for the moment. It's a peace that passes all understanding. In the midst of a storm, and I have no clue how to handle this, God gives a peace because we, He is the one that's in control. <clears throat> we look at the way that God manifests Himself to us. One of the fruits of the Spirit, if we're walking in the Spirit of God, one of the fruits of the Spirit is the fruit of peace. So we know that when we're walking with God and we examine Scripture that we're going to experience peace. And that's what God says in this particular passage. He says, I make peace. And then He also says, I create evil. And to understand that, we can look back at the story of, of King Saul. And you know that King Saul in the Old Testament, he disobeyed God. He got lifted up with pride. His, his spirit changed. And the, the, the passage says... That's in 1 Samuel. Let me look at that. I got it marked here. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. It says, But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Now that's, that's the key phrase that I'm after. The Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now when I first looked at that uh, several years back, that bothered me a lot. An evil spirit from the Lord because that doesn't coincide with what I understand and believe about God. And, and there's a whole different, you know, Brother Billy needs to come up and just preach on this particular verse, because there's a whole package of things for us to evaluate and understand as Christians about that particular verse. But to understand this, I want you to read, I want you to catch this phrase with me. The Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. When God's presence is manifest with us and we are walking with God, there is peace. Just one of the things that we experience. 
But when God's presence departs from us or we are not walking in the Spirit of God, there is an evil spirit from the Lord. God's presence with us brings peace. God's separation from us brings evil. And so I want, to begin, I want you to begin to have this, mind, this shift in your mindset about evil, like I had to have, because I typically think of evil as an evil spirit, some mystical spirit out there or something, or, or I, I'm able to transfer all my responsibility for the evil on Satan rather than looking at what's going on. And as you begin to understand Scripture here, and, and there's no way you can cover it all, I, I encourage every one of you to go home, use your concordance, and look up the word spirit, and just go through, and there are... It was over 400 different passages that talk about the word spirit. But whenever there's God's presence manifest, the spirit of the Lord is there and there's peace. Whenever God's presence is separate from us, God departs his presence from us, his spirit from us, what's left is evil, the spirit of evil. And so we can go through scripture now and we can begin to look at what we're asking God to be delivering us from in looking at the different evil spirits that exist in scripture. That's what I wanted to attempt to do. Do we need to be delivered from evil? evil? Well, I want you to begin to think about that. When I first thought about it, yes, I want to be delivered from Satan. But that's not all that the Scripture Scripture is is telling us to do and to examine. We need to be delivered from some evil spirits. And what are those? I did a quick scan. And I want to to review with you some of the things that I found in there. And there's no way I can cover it all. But I want to read for you just a couple of the spirits, the evil spirits that we could record, that the Bible records, that we could count for. There's a spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of, and we'll talk about the positive side of that in a few seconds. But in the Old Testament, New Testament alike, there's the spirit of fear that different people have. And I'm convinced as a counselor in the work that I do, this spirit of fear is the root of some of the behaviors that we have such as perfectionism, control, anger. It's the spirit of fear that's driving that. It's the root of that. Spirit of fear. A hasty spirit. Have you ever rushed into something and later regretted it because God was not in it? You had a hasty spirit. A troubled spirit. No peace. A spirit of jealousy. A lying spirit. An overwhelmed spirit. A stubborn spirit, a rebellious spirit, a perverse spirit, a haughty spirit, a proud spirit, a judgmental spirit, an unclean spirit, a spirit of bitterness that takes deep root. These are only some of the spirits that are there. I'm looking at my list and there's so much more that I could go to and just evaluate, but lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Do we need to be delivered from evil? Yes, we do. Brethren, what what I want you to begin to understand, though, is it's not just the evil that Satan creates. It's the spirit that we have in us of pride, the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of haughtiness. Father, that's there. Brethren, that's there because our Father has removed His presence from us or because we have not been seeking Him out. We have not been pursuing Him. Deliver us from evil is not just a transferring of responsibility onto Satan and saying, God, get Satan out of my life. It's an evaluation of ourself. It's beginning to look at who you are and the spirit that you're walking in and recognizing that I've got this problem in my life. Lord, deliver me from this spirit of pride that's causing this separation of my life from you. Because it's leaving me, leaving me in a place where there's nothing but evil. There is no peace. There is no joy in this spirit. I also looked up, because when you look up the word spirit, you're not going to find just a, a few things about evil spirits. You're also going to see this plethora of the spirits of God that bring in just great blessings in our life. So I want to look at that for a second. Remember, evil is a lack of God's presence. Whether that's because God has removed His Spirit from you because of disobedience or because you're sitting stagnant and not pursuing God like we ought to pursue. But whenever we do, whenever we begin to pursue God, 
We mean what we say when we say, Lord, deliver us from evil. And we trust in God and we begin to pursue God and God manifests himself to us. Listen to some of these spirits that show up. And this is just a very quick, a quick look at these as well. There's a patient spirit. Well, you know, we need that. I'm thankful for that when I have it. I don't have that very often. There's a humble spirit. There's a broken and a contrite spirit. The sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit. There's an excellent spirit. There's a strong spirit, a spirit of truth. There's a fervent spirit, a spirit of meekness, a spirit of love, a spirit of power, a spirit of a sound mind. Spirit of faith, a clean spirit. There's a spirit of wisdom. There's a quiet spirit. Now those spirits are only there whenever God's presence is manifest in our life. And God manifests His presence because He chooses to in our life. And He manifests His presence to us because we are diligent in seeking Him. And He says those who diligently seek Him will find Him. And they will have in their life then they will have been delivered in their life then from that evil. We will have been delivered in our life then from evil. And in place of that evil, we find things such as these spirits that I just named. So when evil is present, God's presence is absent. When a spirit of peace is there, or a spirit of meekness is there, God's presence is there. So we pray in the... In, in the In the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I want you to begin to think and challenge yourself and evaluate yourself and try the Spirit. So I was talking with a a friend of mine not a couple weeks ago, and he was talking about that particular verse, that passage of Scripture. And he said to me, he said, but God doesn't give us a lot in His Word about how how we need to try the Spirit. We don't, you know, we don't have a lot on how we should do that. I can't remember his exact wording, but that's what he was saying to me. That's absolutely not true. You know, with just a little bit of discernment, if you're walking in a spirit of error, a spirit of lies because there's no peace, or you're walking in a spirit of truth because there's certain things that God's going to manifest in your life whenever you're walking in a spirit of truth. So I think every one of us here, because we are faithful in coming to church, because you hear the preaching of God's Word through Brother Billy. You sing in, in, um, in the Spirit. You pray. Every one of you guys here, you should have that fundamental level of discernment to know how to try the spirits. And so when you pray, Father, <clears throat> deliver me from evil, you should be thinking about, Father, what evil am I entrapped in? What evil am I ensnared in? Because sometimes there are those evils that Satan lays out there for you to tempt you. But oftentimes it's an evil that you have walked into and you've ensnared in because God's presence is not manifest with you because you've not been doing the things that God has called us to do as His children. Daily feasting on His Word, for example. But we can try the spirits. I want to give you a warning, even if you don't know, if there's confusion. Some people think that they can try the spirits and say, some people say, I've had some people um, in a, as a counseling session come to me and They have left their wife and they are in love with this other woman. And this is of God's what they say to me. They have no clue. They have no clue what spirit they're walking in. But they believe they're closer to God than than at other times in their life. Brethren, that's why we have the church. That's why we have the, the the brothers and sisters in Christ, our pastor, Brother David, our leaders within the church to go to. And if you resist and you reject the counsel that there are, the leaders within the church give you, you need to be delivered from evil because you are walking in an evil spirit, separate from God, rejecting the counsel that the body of Christ has given you. We can try the spirits. And whenever you are praying that prayer, deliver us from evil, I hope that you're trying the spirits because you may be deceived in thinking that you're okay because there's a false peace that Satan brings in our lives that is not a peace of God. And it does not last. But there's a peace that passes all understanding that God brings. And not only that, it's His presence that's manifested with us. Deliver us from evil that we might stand, Father, in Your presence. Or that we might kneel in Your presence. 
I want you to evaluate that each time that you pray that and you think about that. Now, there's, there's a couple of passages of scriptures that I want us to really look at for a second. I want to, I want to go to New, the New Testament in the book of Colossians, chapter 1. I'm going to read several verses here because I think it captures an important part of, of being delivered from evil. Colossians chapter 1, verse, starting in verse 9. The Bible says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Okay, catch that. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Now that phrase we could switch to evil. Who hath delivered us from evil and hath translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son. Brother Billy quoted a, a verse this morning out of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. He, hath, he has delivered, he's continuing to deliver, and he's yet to deliver. And that's in a, in, a, in a work that Christ has done, in a work that God has done, but that's what this passage here is talking about. Whenever we pray, Father, lead us, or deliver us from evil, we can reflect on this particular passage in, in Colossians because God already has delivered us from evil. He's done it in a very fundamental sense through the shed blood of Christ. And he has delivered. And Paul, earlier in that particular passage, is celebrating what he's seeing in the life of those believers. He's praying for them that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, bearing fruit, bearing the spirits of meekness and patience and those other things that I read a second ago. Because God has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has delivered us from Now, it's important for us not to stop there, though, because God has done that on a fundamental level so that we can then deliver ourselves from evil. So let's jump back to Galatians. Pages back. Galatians chapter 5. We'll start in verse 16. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. It says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit. Now you can't think about evil. Deliver us from evil and search that out in, in Scripture and separate evil from the word Spirit. Are you walking in a spirit of evil or a spirit of God? The admonition here in Galatians, first thing it says in Galatians 16 is, This I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You shall not fulfill, you shall not be caught up or ensnared, trapped, whichever word that you want to use, in evil, brethren. Walk in the Spirit. We are able to walk in the Spirit because of fundamentally what Christ has done for us. He has delivered us from a, from a, from a, a consequence of our sin that we couldn't deliver ourselves from. So that whenever we pray, deliver us from evil, we can celebrate what He's already done, and we can begin to evaluate ourselves, discern out and try the spirits, and be very purposeful when we talk to God. God, deliver me from evil, because I'm struggling with a spirit of pride, a spirit of jealousy, a spirit of covetousness. Deliver me from that evil, Father. Verse 17, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. You see the battle that exists there. But, verse 18, If you be led by, of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, 
variants, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. I read through all of that because you see that, that dichotomy between what's evil, deliver us from evil, Father, and you see what's led of the Spirit of God, what's manifest as a fruit of the Spirit of God because we begin to walk in the Spirit. In verse 24, They that are Christ's have crucified the flesh. So my challenge to us as we think about this particular <coughs> prayer that we pray with, uh, um, in the Lord's Prayer, and we get to that particular phrase, deliver us from evil, that for yourself as an individual, we can celebrate that we have been delivered from evil, but that we also need to begin to evaluate what are we asking God to deliver us from. Are you asking God to deliver you from a spirit of evil and shifting blame onto Satan? you can't do that. And if you're doing that, you're not praying that particular prayer with understanding. When we begin to ask God to deliver us from evil, what is the evil that I'm ensnared in? What's the spirit that I have been caught up in that is causing the separation? Because your spirit is not there whenever I'm walking in disobedience to you. And what's left in that place is evil. It's darkness. And your spirit is not there. And God, I can't call myself a Christian whenever I'm not walking in your spirit, not feeling the manifestation of your spirit in my life. But we pray that prayer and we begin to evaluate ourselves and we begin to name for God, this is the evil that's in my life right now. I have an evil spirit of pride. And God, I ask that you deliver me from that. And the blessing and the beauty of it, and like Brother Billy was sermon this morning, we can't even thank him enough for is that He replaces that evil with these fruits. So brethren, as we think about all this, I, 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 I hope that we, we are led by the Spirit, that we pray that, and that you do ask yourself, do I need to be delivered from evil? Yes, I do. And here's the evil, Father. Here's the evil that I have an understanding that is in my life at this point. And then we're able to crucify the flesh and just praise God because He's given us then those spirits of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and temperance. What a great God that we serve.